In a previous video I showed you how to make a car an enclosure uh, an iGIS file for that whole package, that whole bundle of stuff um, in Fusion 360. You can do it in whatever modeling software you choose to. Now what I want to do is show you how we can calculate the air drag on that vehicle using ANSYS. So this is ANSYS Workbench. Um, there are a bunch of toolboxes within ANSYS and we're going to use CFX which is a fluid flow package. Um, so let's uh, as usual what we're going to do is sort of go through things in order working down the list. First of all we have to choose some geometry and um, for that geometry I'm going to say import geometry um, and then this is the uh, file that I made uh, it's called Tiguan in enclosure uh, you should have made an IGES file and that's what you import. Um, and then uh, what I can do, if I just go to edit the geometry in design modeler, um, it's always a bit slow to start up, but you'll see a view like this and you have to hit generate uh, so that the software actually draws you a picture of the thing you're looking at. And this looks pretty good, that's what I wanted it to be, that's what I drew previously. Um, we're just going to do a few things. The first is this is currently specified as what's, what we've represented is a solid. Uh, I'm going to change that so what we've represented is a fluid. The, the thing that's there is the air. Um, so I've made it a fluid. Um, I guess we could rename it then. It's not much good being called solid if it is a fluid. So I'll call it wind tunnel air. Um, again, I find that a helpful way to think about this, that what we're really representing in, with, with this object that we've created is, is the air in a wind tunnel. Um, the next thing that I can do if I want to, just to be careful, is I can go to Tools, Analysis Tools, um, Fault Detection. And I choose the whole body and say apply. Um, that's good. It says model fault zero, which means this geometry that I've drawn should work OK with what I'm trying to do. If I was getting model faults and then a list of faults, I'd probably have to go back and do something else with my geometry. Um, so that seems fine. I got zero faults. I've set the, um, the air to be... Um, I set this, this wind tunnel air to be a fluid. Um, I'm going to save my project. I'll call it Tiguan Air Drag Calculator. Um, and then I can close Design Modeler. And basically at this stage I'm happy that my geometry is OK. Uh, next, let's have a look at the mesh. Again, I double click on where it says mesh and then I wait a bit. Um, patience is definitely a virtue when you're dealing with ANSYS. Um, sometimes things are a bit slow. Keep an eye on what's in this bottom left hand corner here. It'll tell you if you're waiting for something. So if you click 15 times, as sometimes people do out of frustration, um, you'll find it doesn't work and the whole thing crashes. So you've got to be um, aware that sometimes the software tells you it's busy or it's updating or it's opening a window or something and just wait for it to do that. Okay so we're now in the meshing window and all I'm really going to do here is uh, click and say generate mesh um, and you can see that it's generated a mesh if you've done uh, solid mechanics you'll be familiar with the idea it's breaking this um, solid object up into a bunch of uh, tetrahedrons made out of triangular faces um, and the reason it does that is because it's easy to calculate or relatively easy to calculate what should happen in one of these tetrahedrons it's difficult to calculate it in more complicated geometry and so it kind of adds up the effect of a lot of tetrahedrons to give you the overall um, behavior of the fluids in this case. Uh, just as we did previously it would give you the overall behavior of a solid. Um, I can do some things just to look at this a bit more clearly. The first is I can say wireframe 
and then we can see that somewhere in the middle of this mesh there is a car and in fact we can also see that on that car there are more elements so the software's done something reasonably clever there it sort of said out at the ends of the wind tunnel there's not very much changing there's no need to have a complicated set, a small set of elements but around the car that's where the geometry changes um, and the geometry is interesting and so that's where we need some more elements so you can kind of get a sense of how that's working looking like this um, if you want to you could go one step further and ask for a new section plane that's up towards the top here and if I say new section plane what I can do just move this into the orientation I want it um, I'm not very good at manipulating in uh, in the ANSYS environment so sorry if my mouse control isn't very good but once I've got this looking like this I could just drag out a line like so and then it'll give me a section plane along there so I can start to see okay that's what's happening inside uh, the vehicle there and I can turn the wireframe off if I want and see that I've got you know um, I can even start to see things like that uh, whether how the elements are distributed around my tires and so on and if I decide I don't want that section plane right now I just click there and if I decide I don't really ever want that section plane again there's an option to delete the section plane and this sort of sometimes lives there like that I, I pulled mine out and rearranged it but you may find when you first create it it's down here anyway that's how that works okay um, there are things we could do with the mesh you'll probably be able to guess that we could ask for a finer mesh or uh, we could try to add in more elements specifically around our vehicle things like that uh, I'm not going to do any of that for the time being I'm just going to say I'm happy with that mesh and we'll come back later and look at some clever things we could do um, so if I go back now to my um, overall project window I can right click on the mesh bit uh, it's got this lightning bolt to say it's ready to update and so I right click and say update and now I've got a tick there so that's pretty good and I can close the meshing window um, and we've done that so we're down to two ticks and I move on uh, setup now in setup what we're gonna have to do there are some things the software doesn't know um, like it doesn't know which way the air is supposed to be traveling for example um, and so we're going to have to start thinking about these things at the moment um, we've just got this default domain um, and what I'm going to do uh, if I first of all edit the whole domain then I can just check it's using air as our fluid well that's good news um, and there's nothing here that I particularly want to change so I'll just say okay um, now what I'm going to want to do is add in some boundaries and to do that uh, I could either um, right click here and edit some of what's going on there but uh, up in the bar at the top there's this boundary option here and I'm going to need six boundaries in total there's an inlet an outlet and four walls so first of all we'll say inlet and the location of the inlet is this might be easier I hope you can see as I click through um, I'm getting different bits of the setup um, available I just want I'm just going to cancel this and close that and instead um, I wonder if I can do this here I'm not sure if I can um, it that that would have worked okay um, we would have just found the inlet and the outlet and everything else um, but I wonder if I can do something slightly cleverer in the meshing options um, what I'll be able to do if I reopen the meshing window again it says here starting meshing so I won't do anything too dramatic um, I can choose some planes 
and I can give them names. Uh, so I'm going to create a name selection there and call it the inlet and uh, I'll create a name selection. I'm right clicking create name selection that's the outlet. Uh, this is the roof or the ceiling. The important thing is these should be names that help you to find them later. Uh, this is the floor. Uh, this is the uh, passenger side wall. And this is the driver side wall. Okay, uh, so now we've got six name selections and I'm going to save the project and close that meshing window. And now what I can do is update and again I'm just going to have to wait for it for a second and I'm in danger of feeling slightly impatient here. And that's gone all right. And now if I double click again on the setup window, uh, do I want to refresh the simulation? Yes, I do, because um, now it'll become clear what, what this was all useful for. Um, if I now say I want a boundary and I want it to be the inlet, uh, which I need to specify, then the software finds the inlet because I've, I've named it correctly. Um, and then what we can do is we can say we want to have uh, some uh, defined airspeed on the inlet and I'm going to make that 30 meters per second. Um, there are other things that we could change to do with turbulence and uh, flow regimes and various things. Again, until we get an answer that, that we find reasonably believable, I don't want to start changing detailed uh, settings. So I'm just going to say OK. And you can see, now we can see where our inlet is. Uh, we're going to add, again, we need to add six boundaries plus the car makes seven things in total. I'll have an outlet. And again, the software recognizes that it should be uh, at the outlet place. Uh, you can change that if you need to, but it, if you've done, followed what I've done, um, that should happen automatically. Anyway, we want the wall here towards the back of the wind tunnel to be specified as an outlet. And what I'm going to do is just say it's there's no pressure difference between the outlet and anything else. It's, it's not. Um, it's just a kind of opening, um, a free opening that air can just drift out of. Um, and again, the software marks that up and we can see whether we've got roughly the right thing. And I think we do. Uh, now I need some walls so I can say, OK, let's have the ceiling. And this time it's guessed that the ceiling might be an inlet as a boundary type. It, it's not. It's just a wall. Um, no air. We don't want air to go through the ceiling. We want all of our air to come in at one end of the tunnel and go out at the other. That's how wind tunnels work. Um, and again, I could change some details here if I wanted to, but that's the standard setup for a wall. So I'm just going to say OK. Uh, that was the ceiling. Let's do the floor. I'll just make it a wall, check that everything's as I expect and keep on going. Uh, passenger side wall. Again, it's got to be a wall and I'll just click OK. And finally, driver side wall. And again, that's a wall and I can say OK. Now what we've got, I can go through those uh, ceiling, driver side wall, passenger side wall, outlet, inlet, floor, and see uh, where they all are. And then we've got this leftover bit, default domain, uh, default domain default, so good they named it twice. Um, and that's basically now the car, that's everything that's left. So I'm just going to rename that as the car. If I click on it, we can see that it's sort of covering all the different surfaces of the car. Um, so that seems pretty good. I'm happy with everything that I've got there. 
you can edit a lot of this um, and um, ANSYS will let you do some uh, real getting into the, the details of it. Again, I don't want to do that yet. I want to give a real um, demonstration of how the ANSYS defaults will give us interesting results that we can use straight away. So I think uh, I'm just going to um, accept all of that now. We've set things up roughly as I want it to. I'm going to hit save to save the project. And then I can close that um, that setup window and we're ready to start looking at the next step, which is the solution. Double click on solution, wait patiently while it starts the solver manager. Um, and again, there are sort of different options here I could change if I wanted to but I'm going to assume as I have done throughout that the ANSYS defaults are, are good for this kind of thing and I'll say start run and you'll see I hope a screen something like this uh, on the right hand side you get a kind of text description of what's happening and on the left hand side you get a graphical interface and the graphical interface is showing you um, these are different things that the software is trying to balance out and it's some kind of an error in those values that you're being shown and once that error drops off to a certain um, limit or to a certain low level the the software stops iterating so each of these um, markers here is two steps um, where the software is rerunning until it thinks it reaches steady state and because these four values have fallen low enough the software says this is now steady state and the calculation is finished. So we don't have to do anything with that uh, I'll just minimize it in case there's anything we decide we do want to look at there. But you can see we've now got a tick on our workbench window. And the last thing that I want to do now is to look at the results. So ANSYS has now done that uh, air drag CFD analysis for us. Um, and what we want to do now is see what we can see in terms of results. I'd recommend you uh, try a few things and see what what is interesting. Um, I'll show you a couple of things that I uh, would use uh, as a kind of early analysis. First of all, let's just try putting in some streamlines. Um, I won't change the name of them. Uh, we'll put them in all domains and we'll have them starting from the inlet. Uh, and will uh, because the software says uh, velocity is what you're going to look at so we'll look at velocity I'm just going to click apply and there you go that's kind of nice right we've got some streamlines which make some sense they start and finish as nicely parallel and traveling at I guess about 30 meters a second and then around the car uh, they sort of move to avoid the car, which makes sense. The air is passing around the car and they get a bit faster. Uh, they go up to about 40 meters a second. And that kind of makes sense too. Um, the air is get there's not so much room for the air to travel through. So some kind of continuity um, understanding tells us it has to move faster. One thing you could be interested in there is if we made our wind tunnel absolutely massive, then the, the contraction around the car would be smaller and so you might see less of a, an increase in the speed of the air. Anyway, that's something you can play around with um, and you'll be able to see different things using those streamlines. You can add in contours uh, and if I say I want to put a contour on the surface of the car and look at the, uh, I will say, turbulence kinetic energy um, and I'm going to apply that. 
uh, I'll just all these things user locations and plots um, come up in the same place I'm just gonna turn off the streamlines uh, by clicking in that visibility box and what we can see here is something about where there is turbulence in the car There's one interesting thing already which is um, there's something quite significant happening at this point which I made almost by mistake uh, where we've got a change on the bottom of the car so that that's kind of interesting um, I could change this if we look at the total pressure what we find is there's a region of really high pressure around the front of the car and I think if you made that curved uh, you would quite quickly find that the air drag dropped so uh, now that I've mentioned air drag let's go and find out some numbers for that you should you can and should um, investigate all kinds of different things about the way the air is behaving in this system uh, we don't have to look at it on the car we could have a look and say okay on the floor of the tunnel um, how does the pressure vary it varies somehow underneath the car um, how does the uh, speed of the air on the floor change you, you know all of these things are free for you to try uh, one thing that's interesting here essentially we're seeing that the air has zero speed on the floor and that's because of the way walls are defined um, there's a very thin boundary layer above the floor where the air goes from having zero speed to some speed and um, you know you can compare that to your fluid dynamics theory uh, okay so to get a drag force that's a single number and it's calculated um, because it's kind of the drag on the whole all the different surfaces of the car and so I'm going to use this function calculator which is under calculators and I'm going to say the function I want is the force the location is indeed on the car um, and I guess um, just looking at the um, coordinate system that I've got what I what I'm guessing is there should be a force in the minus Z direction that this air blowing through the tunnel is pushing the car sort of backwards within the tunnel so I'm going to choose that I want to know the force acting in the Z direction I'm just going to calculate it and we get a force of um, minus 1464 so it is indeed acting in the uh, minus Z direction if I um, try to calculate the drag on a um, Volkswagen Tiguan from first principles I um, Volkswagen claim a drag coefficient of about 0 0.31 which would give me uh, about 650 newtons here at 30 meters per second so one thing that's interesting is the the blockiness of this vehicle the way I've designed it here without any of the the curves and aerodynamic features is having an effect um, this car has quite a high drag coefficient but that's a number that seems reasonable to me and what I'd like uh, what I'd be interested in seeing is if you design this to be more aerodynamic particularly if you make the front of it more curved you should see this number drop towards something like 650 newtons in the end and that's kind of interesting uh, we can also just check if I look in the y direction uh, we see some negative number that means the car is being pushed downwards onto the road that makes sense uh, that's about 700 and if I look in the X direction in a way I would expect the X value to be zero this whole thing should be completely symmetric um, but nothing ever quite works like that in fluid dynamics um, and so we're getting a very small number in the X direction the car isn't really being pushed to the left or the right and that's what we'd expect um, so I'll just go back to the Z number uh, because that's um, the, uh, the the one that is most relevant that's sort of the overall drag not drag force that you might use in a calculation to find out how much energy this car was using up for example and so I think that's where I'll stop this tutorial 
um, you now know how to look at some outcomes from CFD and you should be able to compare between different designs and start using this as a tool for engineering design. And in a further tutorial later, I'll discuss some of the more advanced options, how we could um, tune the mesh, um, how we could um, think about the roughness of the car and uh, how the roughness of the car might affect the drag and a few other bits and pieces. Um, have a go at it and see how you get on.